Hey everybody, welcome to Crack Pack number 17 on the Manalik. I'm John as always, and it's Origins time. It's been officially released. Many of us have drafted it in our stores, and this weekend it will be draftable and playable on Magic Online. So we're going to crack open this pack. We're going to see what we've got. We're going to go through each card and figure out what we would take. Pack one, pick one at a draft. Well, right on top, we have a card that's first pickable if it's a weak pack. Uh, Way to the Underworld. Three and a black for an aura that uh, gives a creature minus three, minus two. Often used as removal. There's a fair amount of creatures that this will just straight out kill. And uh, even if it doesn't just straight out kill a creature, you can often uh, attack in uh, with a potentially strange attack. You know, attacking in with a 2-2 two -two, and they've got a 2-4. Uh, They'll block, they may kill your creature. But then you throw away to the Underworld on and finish off that creature. It's a totally fine play. It gets even better if you have a way to search up auras, or a way to return auras, or a mancer, or uh, combos well with Blightcaster, etc. But yeah, way to the Underworld, decent, decent first card to see. This one I don't think is a decent first card to see. Infectious Bloodlust, it's one in a red for an aura that gives a creature plus two, plus one, as well as haste, uh, and they have to attack each turn if able. However, when that creature dies, you may search your library for another copy of Infectious Bloodlust and put it into your hand, and then shuffle your library. Uh, I don't like this card. Plus two, plus one is fine for a two-drop aura. The haste really doesn't matter most of the time. You're going to have to play a creature and play this for haste to matter in any way, shape, or form. Uh, early game, even up to mid game, the haste is probably pointless. Uh, attacking each turn if able, well, if you're putting plus two plus one on something, you're probably wanting to attack with it each turn anyways. Um, but having to play multiple copies of this in my deck just to get the uh, the effect of that last part there, I don't really want to do that. I, I don't like this card. I'm not high on this card. Uh, I don't think it's really playable, so I'm going to pass on it. Next up, we've got Enshrouding Mist, a single white combat trick, uh, or trick for other situations as well the target creature gets plus one plus one cool prevent all damage that would be dealt to it this turn cool if it's renowned on tap it cool uh this is a good combat trick i've seen this used to great effect i've been blown out by this several 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 times i never see it coming uh i, I was a little bit down on it when i first read it i actually thought that it was a, a full fog so i thought it was prevent all damage dealt to and by but it's not. So uh, this actually gets its man a lot of the times. Uh, creatures attacking in, you block with something that has a little bit less uh, power than it. Suddenly you give it plus one, plus one. It's going to trade, uh, except you prevent all damage to it. So it's just going to live. It, it does actually a decent impersonation of Coat with Venom. Um, I really like Enshrouding Mist, and I, uh, I need to forget anything that I thought bad about it the first time I read it, because... Uh, uh, I have that bias at first, and I need to get rid of that because I think this card is great. Probably not for, actually, not even remotely first pickable. You'd never first pick Coat with Venom. Uh, but if you're in white, totally fine pickup. Totally fine. Next up, we've got Eye Blight Assassin. This is a two and a black elf assassin. Very important. Uh, it's a two, two. And when it enters the battlefield, it gives a creature an opponent controls minus one, minus one to end a turn. Uh, just a solid creature. Just totally fine. Uh, three drop, two, two with a good upside is right exactly what you would expect to play uh, or expect to pay to play it. Um, yeah, it's a fine creature. It's not first pickable at all. Uh, it gets better in the elf deck, of course, but I'd play this in a non-elf black deck as well. Um, the first one of these I'd be totally happy to get take, but not first pick. Next up, we've got Titanic Growth. This is a one and a green instant, uh, and the target creature that you hit it with gets plus four, plus four, till on a turn. Uh, totally fine. It's one more mana than Giant Growth and one more power and toughness than Giant Growth, and it will often do the trick. It'll close out games. It'll uh, take an opponent who was comfortable to being probably very uncomfortable with their life totals. Uh, yeah, it does exactly what you need to do in green. Um, a fine pick, mid-pack, late-pack, not a first pick, not a high pick, though. Total include, though. Next up, we've got Nivix Barrier, three and a blue for an illusion wall with uh, Flash, Defender, and uh, when it enters the battlefield, attacking creature gets minus four, minus oh until end of turn, and it's an O4. Um, it's an interesting creature. It's very defensive. It's 
almost a tempo play because you're going to hopefully turn off an opponent's attack for the turn by uh, either making the creature small enough or just blocking with this wall. It's not really what I like doing. I don't like playing walls generally unless they have a really awesome effect. And this has an okay effect one single time. And then it's just an 0-4 wall, which is not terribly exciting. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't play Yoke Docks very often at all. I don't think I'd play this very often at all. Uh, but I'd like to see if it is playable maybe in a heavy, 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 grindy control deck or something. Next up, we've got Bellows Lizard. Single red for a 1-1. One, one. And you can pay one and a red to give it plus one, plus oh until end of turn. It has expensive fire breathing. Uh, total F. Don't ever play this card. I saw this card played a lot in draft um, this Friday. I saw it played in uh, sealed a lot. Don't play this card. It's not worth a card slot ever, 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 ever. Pass this card. This card should be last picked and never played. Next up, we've got Leaf Gilder. It's a one and a green uh, elf. Very important. Uh, Druid 2-1, and you can tap it and gain a uh, single green mana in your mana pool. Uh, yeah, this is um, Golden Hind, which was totally first pickable in Journey to Nyx, and I think this is totally first pickable here. Uh, again, in a slightly weak pack. If there's no great on commons or uh, you know your rare is bad, I would take a Leaf Gilder. I would definitely take a Leaf Gilder. And uh, yeah, it's just fantastic. It, it helps out every single green deck you would ever play. You would never not play this in a green deck. And if it's in the elf deck, it gets even better than that. Uh, Leaf Gilder is just fantastic. It is a star common for green. So yeah, Leaf Gilder. Very happy with that. Next up, we've got Topin Freeblade. One and a white uh, human soldier 2-2. Two -two. It's got Vigilance, Renown 1. This has done a lot of work for me in my experience, and I've seen it be really good. It's a 2-2 two -two for 2 which is fine. You want those. You really want those in this format, I think. I think this is a 2-2 two, two for 2 format, uh, a 2-drop format. Uh, and it very quickly can become a 2 or a 3-3 three, three for 2. Plus it's got Vigilance, which isn't the most exciting ability, especially on a small creature, but I would expect to play a vanilla 2-2 two, two for 2. Uh, this thing just does a lot of work. I think it's a medium pick. It's not first pickable at all in any way, shape, or form, and you don't want to load up on these. But uh, the first one is always in my deck. The second one is probably always in my deck. Uh, I really like Taupe and Freeblade. Next up, we've got Ring Warden Owl. Three blue blue for a 3-3 three, three flyer with prowess. I've seen people be fairly high on this, and I don't really agree. It's a 3-3 three, three flyer for five, and it's double blue. There's a very real cost to playing this card. Yeah, it's a 3-3 three, three flyer in a set that doesn't have, you know, dragons flying around left and right. Um, but it's so expensive. It's got prowess, sure, but you know my opinion on prowess and limited. Um, yeah, I just can never really justify putting this in my deck, even in my grindy decks. This isn't really what I want as my finisher. Um, I've seen people value this more highly, and I haven't come up against it, so I may have to keep an eye on if this performs better than I think. But for me, I'm out on Ring Warden Owl. Into the Uncommons, we've got the red-green Uncommon, Zendikar Incarnate. Uh, it's a star four, an X four, uh, and star is uh, equal to the number of lands you control. So assuming you didn't ramp into this, like with Leaf Gilder or something, assuming you paid with lands, uh, this is a 4-4 when you play it. And then it just gets bigger from there. Unfortunately, it has absolutely nothing else going on. It doesn't have Trample, doesn't have Flying, doesn't have Death Touch, doesn't have any cool effects going on. It's a vanilla 4-4 for 4, four, four, which is fine. And then it becomes a 5-4 and a 6-4 and a 7-4 and an maybe an 8-4. You don't often get to 8 mana in limited, um, but it can get there. But without doing anything else, this really isn't that exciting. Gaia's Revenge is exciting as an 8-5 because it has haste, because it can't be the target of anything except for green uh, spells and abilities. Um, you know, I, I really like Outland Colossus because it's a 6-6 six, six for 5 that can become a 12-12, and it has that cool ability of only being able to be jump blocked. You know, it's rare that it's going to run into something with 6 power. This, you know, I, I can throw two two twos in front of it and it's dead. I'm not excited about Zendikar Incarnate. I, I, 
I, I'll, I might play it if I need a four drop, if I need a creature and I'm in red green, but I'm not going to take this very highly at all and definitely not as a reason to go into red green. Next up, we've got Angel's Tomb. Three mana artifact. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield, Angel's Tomb becomes a 3-3 three, three white angel with flying. I played with Angel's Tomb back in Avacyn Restored. Couldn't stand it back then, and I don't think it's any good here. Uh, this is not Glint Hawk Idol. The fact that you can't turn this on whenever you want is really, really, really bad. Yeah, it dodges auras. Yeah, it dodges sorcery speed removal. I don't really care. Um, I just, I never see this do what it wants to be doing. You have to take off turn three to play this or turn four, turn five, you're probably taking the turn off to play a card that does nothing, which is a very hard sell for me. So I'm totally out on Angel's Tomb. I will pass these to anybody else who wants them. Our final on common is Reclusive Artificer, the Is It uh, gold card. So two blue red, uh, two three with haste. And when Reclusive Reclusive Artificer enters the battlefield, you may have it deal damage to target creature equal to the number of artifacts you control. You need to be really heavy artifacts for this to do anything. And I don't think being heavy artifacts is what you really want to be doing in this set. Uh, Blue-Red Thopters seems to be decent, but Blue-Red Thopters is what you're doing. And even then, it's decent when you have, you know, four Thopters. And yeah, I guess this would do four damage, but that's super unreliable as to when you're going to have those artifacts. And you don't want to load up on the bad artifacts. There are a ton of bad artifacts in this set just to make Reclusive Artificer uh, better. I'd rather probably have any creature other than this. Um, I'll have to keep an eye on it and see how it goes, but this does not remotely compare to the elf that does the same thing, uh, except counting the number of elves. Uh, Reclusive Artificer, out on it. Our rare is just Javamaya Coast. Uh, Painland, the green-blue Painland. Tap it to get a green or a blue mana and uh, have it deal one damage to you. Totally unexciting and not even remotely a first pick. And no foil. So, this seems like actually a bit of a weak pack. Our artifact, or our uncommons, I didn't like any of them. Um, so, we are looking at commons from this pack. I think we're looking at Leaf Gilder, Topin Freeblade, and Way to the Underworld. Topin Freeblade, I just don't think is first pickable. I really like it. I've had a lot of good effects, from, or a lot of uh, good. Uh, results from it, but I don't think it's a first pick card. I think it's a, uh, you know, third, fourth, sixth pick card. So we're really looking at uh, Leaf Gilder or Way to the Underworld. Uh, I like both green and black in this set. Um, I prefer my removal to be a little bit more guaranteed than Way to the Underworld, so I don't quite think it's first pickable. So I think we're going to go with a very boring Leaf Gilder as our pick from this pack. Keeps us open. We're not taking one of those on commons and forcing ourselves into uh, a two-color pair. We're going green. Green has elves, which seems to be pretty darn powerful in this format. If you can get it to go off, don't take a leaf gilder and go elves. Don't do that. You want to make sure that you have a good reason to go into elves. You want to have Eye Blight Massacre. You want to have Shaman of the Pack. You want to have Dwinin. You want to have Guilt Leaf Winnower. Uh, you know, something like that. But this is a step there, and even if you don't end up in Elves, even if you don't get one of those good cards, this is still a backbone of any good green deck, so Leaf Gilder is my pick. Definitely let, let me know what you would have taken. Would you have taken the Way to the Underworld? Would you have taken one of those gold cards? Uh, you know, is, is blue-red as good as uh, people are saying it is, that you would actually take Reclusive Artificer first? Definitely let me know in the comments below what you would have taken. As always, if you have any questions, comments, suggestions, you can find me on Twitter at the Mana Leak. That's L E E K, like the vegetable, not the card. And you can also find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash the Mana Leak. You've already found me here on YouTube. You've got the comment section down below. Make use of that. Tell me what your pick would be. Tell me how wrong I am for taking the Leaf Gilder. Tell me whatever. Uh, make use of that comment section. As well, if you like the videos, you should click those little thumbs up icons. That lets me know that you like the videos. That lets the world know that you like the videos. And it keeps my videos rising up through the ranks. As well, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, you should. There's a button below each video and one in the outro of each video. That'll keep you up to date on all the latest crack pack Tuesdays, Wacky Wednesdays, Spiky Saturdays, and any other videos that pop up here or there. But as always, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, let me know. Otherwise, I'll see you all next time.